ever wonder how coaching and healing can work in synergy to propel to propel you towards success now well you are about to find out get ready for the insights or for insights that could transform your life so hello bam bam and welcome to another empowering episode of talking business with ritz the show where we dive into the world of humanizing entrepreneurship this is ritz solared Electra, your host for today i guarantee you today's episode is packed with insights that can truly transform your lives. So before we dive into the valuable insights that our guest is about to provide, let's remember the essence of this show. To my wonderful Bam Bam of coaches, creators, course creators, consultants, experts, and service providers, Talking Business with Ritz is about celebrating authentic stories and valuable lessons we gain from each other's experiences and how we can take advantage of this exper- expertise and experiences. This is the show where we break down barriers and shed light on the secrets of entrepreneurial success. All right. Now, if you are watching us today, um, kindly comment hashtag lives and prepare your questions. Drop it in the comments so we can um, answer them on the fly. And when you are watching us on replay, can kindly ha- uh, comment hashtag replay as well. Now, all right, let's start the fe- the first segment. All right. Welcome to the Know the Expert segment. Here's where we get to know our guest speaker on a more personal level through a series of intriguing random questions. So today, we're privileged to have uh, Coach Taylor A. Caruthers with us. I hope I mentioned her name or <laughs> I pronounced her name correctly. Now, Coach Taylor is not only a life coach, okay, but also a breathwork and that healing practitioner. She is dedicated to creating an impact and legacy. She approaches every interaction with the concept of no two people are identical. So we're all unique. People are rare are where they are, when they are, when they are there, and that is beautiful and exactly where they are supposed to be. All right. Now Get ready to be inspired by Coach Taylor's practical wisdom and strategies around coaching and healing. So welcome, Coach Taylor Carters. Hi, good morning, um, everyone. And thank you so much, Ritzel, for having me this morning. Um, So I am Taylor Carruthers. I, um, no worries on the last name. Everybody messes that up. So no big deal. (laughs) Um, So I just go Taylor C for short, uh, make, make life easy. Um, But yeah, I am a transformational life coach and I have been recently trained in breath work and theta healing. I'm also pursuing um, becoming a Reiki master. And aside in my spare time, um, I have also been a nurse for 14 years and I have worked in primarily in home care and reproductive health. And the common thread of my career, both professionally and now in this endeavor as an entrepreneur, has been to help people um, that need the help and bring awareness and access uh, to people that might not be readily knowledgeable about these different healing modalities or when I'm in my full-time job, people that might not have access to those healthcare services. 
Um, so the mission of everything that I'm doing uh, with my company is to create an impact in the world. Um, this company is a start of a legacy. I'm building a foundation um, for those five beautiful babies that I have. Um, some of them are grown up now, which is like so hard to believe. Um, but I want to change the world on a greater scale. And I feel that coaching and healing are direct keys to uh, line that up. And hopefully my kids won't be having these kind of conversations when they're my age. Um, that's really my ultimate uh, dream with becoming an entrepreneur right now. All right. All right. I just heard, you know, I, I, I just learned that you are a, a 36 year old mother of five. I actually just turned 37. So when I sent that info, I was 36. But yeah, my birthday <laughs> was September 5th. Um, so now now I'm 37. And now the world knows. So I guess I'll stop lying about my age now. Right. That's very profound. Now, what is it uh, look like um, working within your local community to help others? Um, so I am, to make a super long story short, I'm originally uh, from the Midwest and I have been in Western New York for the last 20 years and I now live in Southern California. And um, so most of my adult life and my career were in Western New York and I worked for different local uh, community-based organizations, really getting involved, like really, you know, I started a teen clinic in uh, one of my former roles in a zip code in Rochester, New York, that had the highest, you know, teen STI and pregnancy rates. And uh -huh. when we ran the data of the patients we were seeing, we weren't seeing those patients. And I'm like, there's high schools all around us. Uh, so I started a walk-in teen clinic that was very successful. And really, you know, that was one of the most powerful moments of my career um, as someone that was a teen mom. I had my first child when I was 15. Um, so it was very near and dear to my heart to be able to provide a safe place for people to come if they have questions and provide them with resources. And um, I did various roles in different uh, community-based organizations in that area. And now that I'm in Southern California, as I get to know the new lay of the land, I am doing it at a different level with a different uh, different intention now because I'm a little bit older, got a little bit more experience under my belt and understanding a lot more of how things work. Um, so mm -hmm. working it in different angles to continue to make that impact. Okay, at that time, yeah. At that time, your time when you were um, um, a young mom, how was it like to become a young mother? Um, it was scary. I didn't know what I was doing. I still, uh, my oldest just turned 21 last month and I'm like, I still don't know if I'm like qualified to be a mom. Like it's scary being, you know, responsible for another human. And, you know, I, my daughter's birthday is August 6th, mine is September 5th. So I started my junior year of high school and turned 16 with this sweet little baby on my lap. And uh, my family is truly amazing. Um, I did, you know, raise my daughter. Um, I have five now, but I did raise her. I was able to finish high school, but I had to, you know, get up and take care of my kid and go to school every day. Like not, not going to school, not finishing school was not an option. So um, having to make those adjustments of, you know, my, my friends are hanging out this Friday. I have to let, like get a babysitter and pay for a babysitter and like, do all these things like you can go, you know, to homecoming and you prom and all these things, mm -hmm. uh, which a lot of people don't have the opportunity to. But I was definitely, you know, felt very isolated. Like I was one of the few that um, had a child, of course, at that age. And um, it was it was just I'll say scary, but uh, it really kicked me into adulthood very fast. And I really think that it's a part of why I'm so resilient and just dedicated to making things happen because ultimately kids did not ask to be here. So me doing the best that I can to be the best mom and the best human that I can to provide them mm. with a good life. Mm. You are so brave, but you know, at that age, right? Uh, um, I hear, I heard that you, it's, it's a scary experience, but you know, why, why did you keep the, you know, why, why did you push through to that one? Why do I, why did you not, you know, as most people do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would say that failure just was never an option for me. Mm -hmm. Like there, there was nothing there. 
I can't ever think of a time that I thought giving up was the right mm -hmm. solution. You know, my parents have all worked. I mean, my parents still work. So um, I've never seen anything but hard work and dedication. And I was raised like that. So it, it's like this happened. We're going to deal with this. You know, this is my grandbaby or and, you know, we're, we're going to get through this as a family and we're going to help you, you know, that that statement that back then and I think it's still true, you know, like your your life is over, your life is ruined. That is not true. It's it's over and it's ruined if you allow it to be. So if you make a decision and you have the support, I could not have done it without the support. Um, but yeah, it just failure is never, never an option. Right. So I was like going to ask, um, was it easier uh, back then if you have someone like you coaching you <laughs> at that age? But you just mentioned you have a great support system, but not all have that, you know? Yeah, I definitely, it, it's been part of my drive to even become a coach um, because even as I got older and was progressing through my career, I never, no one is ever like, oh, hey, you want to progress to the next level in your career? You should talk mm -hmm. to a career coach. You know, it just wasn't even a part of the conversation. I was fortunate to get into some leadership development programs within the last 10 years or so. And that's really where I started to get a taste of experiencing coaching. And I didn't realize that so much of what I was already doing in my leadership roles at the time at work was coaching and talking to people about their dreams. And like, well, where do you, you know, you're great at your job, but where do you want to be in five years? And um, so I was doing it organically just from my heart because I want to see people do well and be great in whatever they want to do. Um, so, yeah, it really became prevalent in my career and my adulthood that absolutely coaching could have been very like instrumental for me earlier on in my career. Right. So doing a segue now, in your opinion, what is a coach and how should a coach operate? I love that. In, in my opinion, a coach is someone that is or is on their way to where you want to go. I firmly believe that as a coach, you cannot take anybody where you haven't gone yourself. So if I use the example, if you want to be a six figure executive, it's probably not the coach that's for you is probably not somebody that is making half of that and is not in or has never been in a leadership role. Um, and then the same thing, if a person is a relationship coach, you would expect to see that person have decent relationships in their life. Um, so a coach is somebody that has navigated the waters ahead of you and is smoothing the path for you to get there a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, the coach can't do the work for you. So you can hire the best coaches in the world. They can have the best techniques, the best training. If you're not willing as the client to put in any work outside of those sessions, it, it will not work. And that that is my, you know, single, single, singular um, opinion. Um, I'm sure other people feel that way. But in just speaking for myself, you also have to be able to put the work in. So me having been through some of these trials and tribulations, knowing how to navigate them, connecting you to resources, listening intently for like, what is the bottom? What's going on that? you might be fixated on this situation that's super temporary, but there might be an underlying theme that I can pin out as a coach because I've seen it in myself, my clients and others that I can help you identify and actually tackle the, the bottom belief or the foundation of your problem to really create change. All right. Now, I know you've mentioned this uh, already in passing, right? But is there any other reasons why why you you be, you became you know a life coach not any other type of coach and when did it actually begin so i had wanted to get into um coaching slash consulting for a long time but i had 
a lot of what I didn't even know myself or limiting beliefs. I was kind of like, who's going to listen to this young black girl with no, you know, master's or doctorate. So I just had all these limiting beliefs and, you know, being a mom and a wife, I'm like, I like having the security of my job and knowing when, what my paycheck is going to be every two weeks. Um, so I had a lot of fear that I had to work through on my own, as well as, you know, actually wanting to do this. Um, I chose life coaching because my experience, it, like my personal experience is so broad that I didn't want to just focus on one particular area, although I could. But the big thing about coaching for me is when you're in this field, you want to do what lights you up. And that's why I call myself a transformational life coach, because I want my clients, I would love to have repeat clients, but I want to see them flourish and like rock the world after they're done working with me and really transform. I want them to be able to leave my programs and say, oh my gosh, like I am so glad I was, you know, in her energy. I'm so glad I did that. Um, and that's what lights me up, seeing seeing that spark come back and seeing people empower themselves like once they're done working with me. I really, really enjoy that aspect. And I personally feel that if you're when your personal life is in order, your professional life can thrive, your health, your wealth, all the other things. Once you're mm -hmm. back connected to yourself, everything else falls into place. All right. So you mentioned you work with um clients so what type of clients are, are we talking about here my clients my ideal clients are purpose-driven uh people i am very gender inclusive so i don't specify male or female um but typically people that are working in the non-for-profit or healthcare. Uh, me being a nurse that i just know what it's like so um, those are usually my people and these are people that want to empower you know their own mental well-being and just don't have don't know how don't feel like they have the time and need that healing on a deeper level which is also why i incorporate the breath work and theta healing so that my my approach to coaching is to really heal so the coaching can stick basically i don't want you to just be doing great while you're working with me i want you to continue to be doing very well after we work together and continue to progress on all right all right Okay, now we are going to progress with the with some light random questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, now what is your favorite word and why? I don't know if I can say my favorite word. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I would have to say the F word is definitely uh, really frequent in my vocabulary because it, it just, in, in my silliness, it is like, you know you were talking to Taylor if she dropped some F-bombs at some point. Um, when I'm at work, I obviously can't do that and won't do that this morning. Um, but yeah, it, it's like I call it uh, my sentence enhancer. Of it's a, it's a difference when I'm like, oh, I'm upset. Or if I say I'm effing upset, you know it's a different. It's like it has a little different tone. So I'm going to have to go with that one. <laughs> All right. Then. Now, from the scale of 1 to 10, where 10 is the highest, how weird are you? Oh, Lord, probably a 12. <laughs> probably a 12. I, yeah, I, I'm like, so, I'm so put together, like, sometimes, and there's other times where I am just, like, a hot mess in my pajamas watching, like, repeat episodes of American Horror Story, like, in, in like, the middle of summer, and people are like, are you feeling okay? And I'm like, I'm perfectly fine, and I'm over here, like, watching the most crazy or reading something insane. So yeah, I would say a 12. So what's your favorite horror movie? <laughs> you know, it's, there's so many. I was watching one last night that was like complete trash. I would have to say like old school, really bad acting and graphics like Freddy Krueger, Michael Myers, like <laughs> when it was just like, it was scary when I was a kid. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, like movie production has come so far because you can just see everything that's happening. Um, but yeah, I would say more old school than new school because new school for me is like so much more gory. It's not really scary anymore. And I like the thrill and like the anticipation and not just like blood and guts everywhere. Yeah, old movies are like that. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Now, on your opinion, what's the most challenging aspect of being an entrepreneur that people might not realize? <laughs> um, I would say to be an entrepreneur, it doesn't matter what you're going to sell. You could be a coach. You could be selling shoes. You are going to learn some stuff about yourself that you had no idea. You can have, you know, one thing about me is I've been running other people's businesses successfully my entire career. So I do have a strong like business acumen, but mm -hmm. the journey that I have been on personally throughout entrepreneurship, I had no freaking idea. I'm like, oh, I know how to do sales. I didn't know that mindset is sales. Like, you can know all the sales psychology. You can know a lot of things, but if you can't like implement them and truly change yourself as an entrepreneur, you just won't, you won't make it. So every day for me, I learn something new. I talk to new people. I keep putting myself out there and um, you have to be willing to learn yourself before you can really represent your business. That is so how do you handle moments of self-doubt or uncertainty in your, in your entrepreneurial journey? I thankfully have coaches. Um, I uh, actually put it on my website. Like I will probably always have a coach um, because I don't think that my learning is ever going to stop. Um, but I have built up a network of people that I can send a voice note in Slack or Telegram and be like, I am stuck and I don't know why. So for me, it's the having the awareness to like pinpoint what's going on and absolutely mm -hmm. reaching my hand up for help. I'm in so many different groups and I hope, you know, what I've seen is that I answer questions when I can support other people and people have done the same for me. So it's really about having a community that can see you through that and give you tips and tricks because sometimes, you know, I, I facilitate breath work for other people and I, it's a little bit different to do it by yourself for yourself. Um, so sometimes I can sit with it and meditate and journal and kind of work my way through it. And sometimes I do have to like reach out, but I am a person that it doesn't make me feel weak anymore. That's something I, I had to also let go of is, you know, I, I know everything that I need to do. No, I don't. And I probably never will. And that's, that's why we have, you know, relationships with, with other people that know, and that might be their area of specialty that can help. So they say no man, no one man is an in an island. Very true. So, yeah. So are there any books or quotes that have significantly, you know, influenced your journey? Oh man, I have worked with some awesome people. Um, I had, I started off my journey with um, my. A trauma coach actually she's the owner um, her name is mariah and she's the ceo of own your trauma and i was a person that thought like oh i didn't have you know this crazy tumultuous childhood i didn't think i really had anything to work on boy was i wrong um and then um i have worked with another coach uh lanisha marie she really helped me at the beginning like putting my ducks in a row because i had all these dreams and aspirations and i needed like i needed somebody to like pull them out and be like one one thing at a time so um i've worked with a coach uh she's actually local here in san diego her name is zill eiler um she really helped me with the embodiment and now i have a spiritual mentor um crow miller who is i'm in a 13 month container that has changed my life in so many ways and I work with Hope Long, who is an organic uh, sales and marketing specialist. So I've seen, I've had coaches at different levels and um, for different reasons. And I've even had a money coach. Like, I, so I'm not against any type of, of people that are specialized in certain things um, because digging into money trauma, it's like, if you can't do anything, maximize a thousand dollars, what are you going to do with 10,000 or a hundred thousand? So kind of like stepping my way through, um, different cohorts and different programs. And then, um, being a part of the Institute for coaching mastery has been, um, super transformational. So like 
as I'm sure everyone that's listening, I do a lot because <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I do still work full time, like, but I do a lot in my, uh, what I'll call my downtime and my spare time to continue um, my own personal journey so that I can best serve my future clients as well. All right. Now, what are your, um, what are some of your favorite hobbies or activities outside I love to read. Um, I do, I listen, I'm on Audible listening to the Neville Goddard collection right now. And um, I actually still like to pick up an actual book. So my bookshelf is full and I just got some new Dr. Joe Dispenza um, reads that I'm gonna be diving into. Um, But yeah, spending time with my family, uh, my friends, getting out in nature, um, doing things that make me uncomfortable because I'm not, I'm, I'm definitely more of like a city girl than a country girl. And um, I went out into the mountains with some friends last weekend and um, I love the ocean. Being right by the ocean is just so beautiful, but um, I'm really like chill. I'm so like content at home on a Friday night, like watching Netflix or reading a book. Um, my life is not that exciting anymore, but I really, really like it. <laughs> All right. Now, if you could give your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? Hmm. That's so funny. I asked this question in a few groups um, this week, actually, that exact question. And um, mine would be to listen, to understand and not to respond, because I, you know, I don't know how many I'll never know how many blessings I blocked and opportunities of growth that I blocked. 10, 15 years ago, because I, I was just go, go, go. So like, sit, sit still, listen, understand, then move. Like you don't have to be going 20,000 miles an hour every day of the week for, you know, that that's not always effective. So I would, I would, that would be my advice to my younger self. Wow. Nice. Okay. Now last question. Um, What's one thing that people might be surprised to learn about you or your business? So on top of the healing that I um, infuse, I also study astrology and human design. I just don't talk about it a lot um, because I don't want to confuse people with my messaging of like, wait a second. Um, But astrology and human design have been so key to me figuring myself out. Um, I also use the, I can pretty much tell people's Enneagrams when I'm talking to them. I'm a, I'm a three and learning more about myself using those tools um, is also how I serve my clients. So I won't talk about it unless they want to talk about it basically. Um, But I have my whole little like other communities of astrology nerds and human design nerds that I get to geek out with and talk about all the energy and what is happening and surviving retrogrades and like what to do, what not to do. Um, I just, so it's infused in my business, but um, it would be the one thing that people may or may not know. All right. Now I didn't know that (laughs) when I'm looking, when I'm researching you, I didn't know that. I didn't see that. All right. Now, thank you coach Taylor for being such a good sport. By now, um, we already have an idea of who Coach Taylor A. Coders is as a real person. So this concludes the first segment of our show, Know the Experts. Okay, I'm going to flash, Coach, I'm going to flash the second um, um, segment. You can uh, try drink water if you want. So we're going to have like five seconds of six. Are we good? Mm-hmm. All right. Now, welcome to the exciting part of the show. Learn from the expert. So for those who are just tuning in, this is Ritzel Loretta Rectra, your host for today. All right. Let me just shift the camera. Okay. I'm a content creator and process automation specialist and also the CEO and owner of my children. Join our free Facebook group, Talking Business with Ritz, live expert interview interview and watch the past episode um 
for talk for for the past episode for all this. So just joining us, joining us today. Sorry, joining us today is Coach Taylor A. Caruthers, a renowned life coach and a breathwork and theta healing practitioner. She is also a CEO of Meta Metanoa. Metanoia. Yep. Metanoia <laughs> Innovative Solutions. She will shed light on three, three crucial topics of how the synergy of coaching and healing for personal growth. All right. All right. Let's talk business. Okay. Let me shift the camera again. So imagine a day without even one person caring about you. That would be very, very, very lonely. So this topic is all about making sure that coaching is accessible to everyone, no matter who they are or where they come from. So it's like opening a door and saying, come on in, this is for you too. So here's the first topic. Let me just flash it on the screen. Here we go. Breaking barriers, fostering inclusivity, and access in coaching. So all right, Coach Taylor. Could you tell us why coaching is called a tool? I'm sorry, what was the last part of that? Uh, tell us why coaching is called a tool, T-O-O-L. Okay. Um, I believe that coaching is a tool because, again, like, um, and for people that weren't on earlier, you have to do some work. You have to be willing and open to do some work. The coach can only do so much. You know, they can give you the best, you know, resources. I don't think that coaching is is personally like someone giving me advice, but mm -hmm. really listening intently to me and what my situation is, which is what I try to do for my clients, mm -hmm. is really being an active listener and picking out where you see those patterns, trends in their life or what their, their main issue, that main pain point that they're coming to you with to really get to the root of the problem that when you're in it, you can't, it, it's hard to see your way out of it when you're, when you're living it, eating it and breathing it every day, all day. Um, so having a coach as a tool to help you see yourself through those um, problems is what I look at coaching doing. All right. Now, how does it break barriers and what are these barriers that might stand in the way of personal? Um, so for me personally, as a woman of color, um, I didn't really have access um, or know about how to pursue coaching. I thought, you know, coaching was for rich people and mm -hmm. I wasn't rich. Um, so like that whole, just the stigma of, of that, of like, you know, a, a life coach is $50,000. Yes. There's some that are, um, but that's for a whole different, you know, type of person at a different point in their own journey. Um, so I think for me to, you know, exist in the space as a coach mm -hmm. of color, as a healer of color, and um, if somebody, you know, has never talked about coaching before, they can book a free call with me. And I am not a pressured salesperson. It is not, you know, crucial to me to try to make you buy my program on that call. My goal is to really educate you, answer your questions, give you some value, and again, equip you with the tools to make the best decision um, possible for you. But my biggest thing is existing in this space. And if somebody is curious, um, they can, you know, see like, oh, she looks like me. Maybe, maybe I want to book a call with her and just pick her brain really quick. Um, now, those are, of course, time limited. They're like 15, 20 minute calls. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm more than happy to just, you know, people that are curious are that like those are the people that I want to talk to and, and let them know the power and um, be able to direct them on their way. All right. Now, what does inclusivity mean in the context of coaching and why is it important? For me, the inclusivity is honoring people for who they are, which is why, you know, very clearly in my mission statement, as soon as you go to my website, my Facebook group, um, I'm letting you know that my foundation is anti-racist, gender inclusive. Um, there's enough places in the world that are not friendly and welcoming to people um, mm -hmm. that are living a different experience. And I just want to be a safe space for them. So 
letting people know that maybe a lot of these tables don't quite exist yet, but I'm building one and you can absolutely come, you know, sit at my table basically. And hopefully they go off and build their own too. Um, there's just so much, you know, ex exclusion um, in the world, just outwardly, even in 2023. Um, that my I'm, I'm doing the contrary action of like everybody is welcome to, you know, come to my groups, sign up, get my information and I, I, all are welcome and honored here for who they are. All right. Now, can you share some common barriers people face when trying to access the um, I'm going to say time. Time is is key, is huge. You know, as a as a busy mom, I, I get it, you know, taking on something that sounds like it's going to be like, oh my gosh, is this going to be like a, another part-time job and take me 20, 30 hours a week? Um, yes. So I would say time, uh, finances are another one. So I have explored every financing option. I, I'm pretty sure I've covered them all um, to make sure that financing is accessible for people because, you know, like I said for myself, I didn't have five or 10 grand sitting in the bank that I could just fork over a credit card and put myself in a coaching program. Um, so looking at it from that lens of, you know, time, the finances, and then, you know, talking about what you do, doing, doing shows like this and just putting myself out there. So people might have thought the same thing that I thought I was like, oh, coaching is for rich people. I, I, I can't. That's not for me. But there's coaches that, you know, do a, so many magical things and can hone in on that one, you know, the field is getting very, and it, it is, and it's continuing to do, you know, what we call niching down, where the goal is to talk to one person and to, to solve one problem. So you will absolutely be able to find a coach, no matter how random you think your problem is, somebody else has had that problem and somebody has created a coaching course or content to help support you through that. So knowing that, you know, no matter what it is, somebody can help you. Yes, there's always a coach for you <laughs> out there. Absolutely. Yes. So how does fostering inclusivity directly contribute to personal growth and development? Um, again, I think having a diverse, um, and not just because I, I am a person um, of a marginalized community, I think it's just invaluable when you're in that space to learn from others and learn about their customs, their beliefs, their culture you don't have to morph overnight and convert to whatever it is that they're doing, but to have that diverse conversation and not just having a whole bunch of people that think like you, that do what you do, um, you tend to kind of live like these parallel lives that you don't even realize it, but um, I'm just going to throw this out there. All the soccer moms are kind of similar. I was an all-star cheer mom for years, so like I get it. You know, we had we had our little sectors of, you know, getting into places where you're comfortable. And I think that fostering the inclusivity and having people around you that are different can definitely make you uncomfortable. But when you're uncomfortable, that's where you grow. Right. OK, now, how can fostering inclusivity in coaching positively influence a business or an organization? For me, in the and in, in experiencing that in the workplace and in, 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 in my business, it just that diversity of thought, you know, people are, again, how we're born, raised, who, who we grow up with, how we choose to be in the world, getting that diverse perspective, like the problem mm -hmm. solving, you know, those brainstorming sessions are so powerful because you have people that can solve your problem that's been stumping you for a week in 30 seconds. And you're like, oh my God, how did that happen? So just having different people around you um, is just, for me, it's it's so beautiful, but it's also so powerful because you can go so much farther, so much faster when you have you know other people pulling you along versus you trying to drive that car by yourself the, all the time. All right, now for coaches, and consultants, what practical steps can they take to ensure their services are accessible to a diverse range of individuals? What can you advise them, uh, for them? I would say most importantly, one of the things that stood out to me when I started this journey was the inaccessibility because of finances. 
Mm. Um, so having some lower ticket, like the, the talk of the town now is all the high ticket programs. And I think that that's amazing. I have some high ticket offers, but making sure that if you really want to capture people that you have valuable programs at lower price points or that you offer, you know, payment plans or financing options. Um, there's some that I've discovered that are super like minimal, you know, a couple hundred dollars to, to get enrolled with them to, for you to be able to offer um, that service and making sure, you know, that those financing, if you do choose to do that, can work with people with different types of credit and income backgrounds. Um, I think that's one of the biggest barriers is that people will get curious and they'll find some, you know, they'll find an amazing coach and they, they get on social media or, or, or Google and they find this coach and they're like, the only way I can work with this person is, you know, $15,000. Um, and that can just be defeating in that they might not ever even book the consult because they, they did, they, you know, don't want to ask uh, what are the payment plan options. So just being really, really clear and transparent about how you want to work with people and how you want to help people, I think will help that. All right. That would definitely help a lot of people to have access to good coaches, you know. All right. Now, well, is there is there any difficulties for coaches themselves, right, to have access to um this um, payment uh, terms like this for this, you know, to collaborate with, with companies that offers payment terms? Um, I wouldn't, it, it really depends on, you know, the coach as an individual, uh, some, and, and making sure your business is structured properly, because in order to uh, get with some of these companies to offer financing, you, ha you actually have to have a legitimate company. Um, so like I do have an LLC, you have to have an EIN. There's some technical um, things that you would need to have in place. And I know that um, from my own research, a lot of people have a great idea and they're really good at marketing and sales and they just hop out there and they're like, oh, you can cash at me. And that's like such a big no-no in the eyes of <laughs> the IRS and taxes and like all this other stuff. Um, so really just making sure that your business is you know, structured properly, that you have those like a through Z points in place of, you know, having your corp, having a, a legitimate company so that you, when you go to talk to whomever XYZ company about offering financing, um, that's all like super basic documentation that they're going to ask you for. And if you don't have it, there's literally no more conversation to be had. So doing your due diligence to form your business properly, I think is like the biggest, um, that's the biggest key that I would say, because um, a lot of coaches don't actually, they're making a lot of money and don't necessarily have an L, an, even an LLC or an S Corp or mm -hmm. anything um, formed yet. Um, and it's it's never too late. You can hop online and, you know, do it today. If you're listening to this and you're one of those coaches, like hop online and get it done. Like it, it is not, it's not as scary as it sounds. Um, but I think that's a huge, that's a huge disconnect in even being able to offer that type of financing and the financing mm -hmm. is what allows you to get paid your fees. You know, I'm never, I'm never going to tell a coach to downplay themselves or their craft. And we do a lot of our own work to, you know, command our prices. So I, I would never tell a coach to like backtrack and be like, Oh no, that's too expensive. Whatever their price is, is their price. I know coaches that are $50 an hour. I know some that are $3,000 an hour. And if they are $3,000 an hour, you're getting you're 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 paying for their expertise and and them being able to solve your problem in that time. So um, I would never say that for people to question their prices, but um, the financing will allow you to get paid that upfront versus offering a payment plan directly with the person, and then you're you're collecting your fees over you know six, twelve, whatever terms you set. Um, so mm -hmm. that's just the benefit in there. Yes. So it make the it make business easier to manage. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, our second topic is empowering change, how coaching transforms life stories. So, Coach Taylor, I've been hearing about this empowering narrative. So, what, what, what is it about and why is it important? 
for me, I was doing very well, you know, without coaching and just kind of navigating my way through and absorbing and learning and asking questions. And Mm -hmm. when I started exploring coaching for myself, it was so transformative to really dive into, you know, a lot of stuff that I didn't want to dive into, but I needed to. And, and having a coach to hold you accountable will absolutely, you know, do that because you, you know, you can't progress to the next level until you've done this. Um, right. So working through things that you might not necessarily um, have wanted to do, but are necessary and mm-hmm. the, the underlying piece of the empowerment is calling your power back in, you know, us as women. And even if you're not a woman, um, we tend to give so much of our power away. So to work with somebody that helps you call your power back into you and you start making decisions for you again, you start living for you again, it is such a game changer. So it's actually one of the pillars of my program Um it, it's just, for me, it's been vital and it has absolutely changed my life to, to better understand myself, learn how to work with myself, the good, the bad and the ugly, and, um, you know, really foster a level of patience that I didn't have before. You know, I, I, I've said I, I do a lot of things and mm-hmm. when my coach, uh, my spiritual mentor was like, meditate for five minutes, I cringed. I was like, there's no way. I, my brain doesn't, I, I, I can't do it. Um, and I just had all these, you know, ideas. And he said, how about working with yourself? And if a thought creeps up while you're trying to meditate, you know, thank it and, and, and let it, let it kind of go on and don't just stop in the meditation and say, oh my gosh, I failed. Um, I couldn't do it because I couldn't turn my brain off and changing that language to working with myself instead of working against myself and, and instead of powering through acknowledging mm-hmm. that your body and your your mind are are serving you and they've served you for your whole life and they're going to continue to serve you and those thoughts are you're you're trying to do something different and your brain is like well, wait a second is this safe do what do we know um so coaching for me really is bringing all of that empowerment calling all that power back in loving yourself at the deepest darkest levels and knowing how you want to you know making a conscious decision of how you want to show up and how you want to work with those things about you that you might have seen as challenges could be your edge, could be your competitive edge, could be, you know, your ticket to whatever it is that you want to do um, once you know how to work with it. All right. Um, so I was going to ask you about, you know, uh, giving some uh, real, real life example, but you're, you're, you're telling the story as it is already. So you are the example. Anyway. Okay. Now, um, what are some common challenges people face when trying to change their life story? And you know, how can coaching address these challenges effectively? I mean, I will definitely say access, like not even not even having the the concept to get on the computer or your phone and just start searching for uh, coaches. Um, people, you know, you'll you'll find people will look for the self help help books or they will sign up for a gym membership and they so i find that i think the challenge is people will try to attack one piece and get really good at that and not worry about anything else because they're hyper focused over here with Mm -hmm. coaching and depending on the type of coach you're working with and the type of healing that you're exploring there is so much more opportunity to do a more holistic approach because if your health is in the gutter, for example, and you say, I'm going to get a fitness coach. All right. That fitness coach is going to get you in shape. But then my question is going to be, what are you doing for your mental health? What are you doing for your spiritual health? And if you are killing yourself to get to the gym, you know, three times a day or three times a week and now you've taken on this extra expense and burden and now you're coming home after the gym and you're looking great on the outside and feeling a lot better because you're getting healthier. But if your mind and, and your soul are still like bouncing back and forth, like I, I look at it like that, you, you're shaking a ball like inside of the, the, the hamster cage. Um, it, it just doesn't, you know, I don't think that that's a good way to try to get long lasting results and 
really take care of the whole person because we're so much bigger than, you know, the one problem that we might be facing right now. Yeah, I got, it, it, it has to be a holistic approach. Absolutely. All right. Now, so far we've explored two topics and is now transitioning to the third. So this is our third topic, cultivating success, unleashing potential with the growth mindset. So um, first off, what is growth mindset, Coach Dita? Growth mindset is, um, for me, I would say my definition would be having the understanding that you are perfect, and I, I don't even use the word perfect a lot, but that you are more than enough right now. Going to get, you know, you don't need another degree, another certification. You don't need, you know, a lot of, and myself included, I thought I needed one more thing and then I'll be ready. I need one more thing. I need to get this job and this title and this salary, and then everything's going to be fine. What I have found in my own experience is that the growth mindset is literally that openness, that willingness to learn and to understand that other people might have an opposing view or might be slightly different than your own. Mm. But if you're open to it and you're willing to get uncomfortable, that's that's you don't have to be uncomfortable like physically. Um, but you don't just having that mindset of openness of like, you know what, I don't know everything and I actually want to hear what this person has to say. Maybe I will go and apply it to my life. Maybe I won't. Or maybe it'll come back up in six months or six years. Who knows? But just having the openness and the willingness to grow and acknowledge that you are always or should, in, in my opinion, have a moving forward um, type of approach to life and just being open to the learning and the opportunities that are presented. All right. But as you said, not everything you need to learn, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, otherwise you won't be able to move forward because you have to learn everything that you thought that you need right, to succeed. Now, um, can you share an example in real life how a growth mindset has led to a significant achievement? Um, I will use a professional um, example. The organization that I'm working for, um, we are going through some major healthcare transformation changes, and that has, in, has required, you know, a growth mindset for the entire, you know, organization. We're talking almost a thousand people. Like this is not a little you know, mom and pop organization that's got like five people, like we had to really go in with a multifaceted approach to not only know what we were doing and why we were doing it and be able to speak to that, but to support people that struggle with change. I am a person that I love change. Not everybody does. Yeah. Um, so being able to explain to people that, hey, like this is the messy middle, ask your questions, like, we are in this together, like continuing to let people know that you value them as an individual and their contributions will allow them to like build that foundation where they might not like change, but they understand at least why it's necessary and can eventually get on board. Um, so that would be like my current real life example of what I'm doing with that. So what, what do you do if people don't want to get on board or is having a hard time getting on board? Um, a lot of conversation. It's it's basically like coaching at work. Um, a lot of conversation to find out why. Usually, it's because of a fear. Um, Ninety nine percent of the time, it's it's a fear of the unknown, which is perfectly you know human nature of not knowing. You know, is my job secure? Is this going to eliminate? You know, we're trying to get really efficient. Is this yeah. going to eliminate? You know, how people have fears about AI right now, and like, is this going to eliminate positions? And I'm like maybe some, but not all, because there still has to be a human to create the AI and feed it the data and work the program. Like there's so much else to it. So really to get into the head um, of the person that is struggling with the change. And like I said, it's usually fear. They might have something else going on that is in their life that is just blocking them from being fully present while they're at work and they're trying to absorb this new information and, and this new style of, of working. And mm -hmm. you know, some people have been in their roles for 10, 15, 20 years. You can't just walk in and say, okay, starting Monday, we're doing something different. 
Um, so really kind of like walking them through all of the steps of the process, the transparency is really key and addressing people individually that are having those issues and supporting them where they need support. It's not a one size fit all by, by any means because every person is, is their own unique individual and being able to find out what makes them tick and what motivates them um, mm -hmm. is really how you can shift some change and shift people into that growth mindset when they're struggling with it. All right. So I was, I was going to ask you about uh, common misconceptions. I believe you've already answered that. So we'll just acknowledge someone with us, which is Heather, and she did mention that Miss Middle is such an important perspective. Yes. I love that. All right, now next question would be, how do you incorporate principles of growth mindset into your coaching practice? So I incorporate them because literally the pillars of my program, number one is to understand, number two is to embody, and number three is to empower. You can have an idea, like I've had these conversations with people and I was one of them, so there's never any judgment from me. But you have to be, I, I keep going back to the willingness. Um, you can't embody what you don't understand. You can't empower what you don't understand. So I start with the understanding to really get to know that person, like on a core level, and really dive into what's there. Because 99% of the time, again, that surface issue, that's their pain point right now, it's a whole, it, it goes into the, like, I'll, I'll nerd out here for two seconds, but it goes <laughs> into that, like, iceberg of the conscious and the, and the subconscious. And you have that tip of the iceberg, that's your, your conscious mind, but you have this whole iceberg under the, underneath the surface that's actually ruling your life that you don't you really pay attention to. Um, and you, you, and you, you can't, you know, we, we, we couldn't function as humans if, if, we, if we didn't have the subconscious. Um, but being able to tap into that, and that's what, you know, breath work allows, theta healing allows, being able to tap into your subconscious and figure out what the real, what is the root of the problem. We're not going to fix them all, but getting into that level of understanding and yeah. showing that perspective to the client of like, actually here's what is and when they can understand that then we can talk about embodying and empowering the results that you want to see because we're dealing with we're pulling some of that stuff from underneath the water to the surface and mm -hmm. planting that on a better foundation to move forward all right for people who are new with this mindset growth mindset thing right most of us are in the silo mindset that this is what i know this is what i can do and it's very hard for me to move, you know, to learn new things. There are people like that. So for people who are new with growth mindset, what advice or what step can they immediately take so that they can, you know, put their best foot forward towards the growth, having growth mindset? Um, I love that you said foot because it's literally putting one foot in front of the other, um, giving yourself grace, giving yourself patience, ask a lot of questions. Don't don't be afraid to ask questions, whether you have a coach or not, or if you're in a coaching program right now. I, this is something that I learned very early on. Get what you paid for. If you are in a group container with a lot of people, put your questions in the chat. If there's a Facebook community or your coach allows access on Boxer or Telegram, ask your questions. Like, don't get stuck. Don't, don't say, oh, my question is stupid or I, I don't, I don't want to take up too much time. No, take up space, take up space, ask your questions, keep putting one foot in front of the other and just don't give up because it's going to look different every day. Um, some days are going to be better than others, weeks, months, years, just keep going. Don't give up on yourself. You owe it to yourself to continue to move forward. All right, Heather says, uh, nerd out, yeah, <laughs> okay. She's got to run, okay, have a great day. All right, I love your shirt. <laughs> Heather says, I love your shirt, Taylor, okay. Uh, love this love question, yes. Okay, thank you, thank you, Heather Smith. Yeah, so everyone, if you came in late, please watch the replay inside the Facebook group, Talking Business with Ritz, live expert interview. 
Now let's move on to the next segment, um, which is work with the expert where Coach Taylor will share her unique offers to help you further with your journey of becoming a high performing uh, person, a professional business owner with growth mindset. All right. Um, now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so my main offer uh, right now Oh, go ahead. Let's flash. <laughs> Let's flash in the segment. I'm mm -hmm. doing this to to help me repurpose later. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all righty. All right. Let, let us flash that. All right, welcome to the Work with the Expert segment, everyone, where we dive deeper into how we can apply the wisdom from today's discussion to your own entrepreneurial journey. Coach Taylor A. Carruthers has generously shared some valuable insights on how coaching can help you with your personal growth. She is an experienced life coach, a breath, a breath work, and theta healing practitioner. She is also the CEO of Meta Metanoia. How do you pronounce it? Metanoia. Metanoia Innovative Solutions. She had shared three topics in the previous segment. So I'm just gonna flash it. So first one is uh, breaking barriers, uh, fostering inclusivity and access to coaching in coaching. All right. Second topic would be about empowering change, which how coaching transforms life stories. All right. The third topic that she, that we've discussed is about cultivating success, which is unleashing potential with a growth mindset. All right. Now, Coach Taylor, could you tell us more about what offer do you have for us today? Absolutely. So I empower purpose-driven non-for-profit professionals to fully embody their mental well-being without the disassociation of compassion fatigue using breathwork activated theta healing. So my group coaching program is called Inception and it is meant to be the starting point. Um, this is a part of me meeting people where they are. Um, this is a six week program that covers the pillars of understanding, embodying and empowering. Um, so this is for the busy people that uh, have a lot on their plates and know that something is off and want it to be different. Um, I am your girl for that. Um, there are longer length programs available, but I felt that the six week, you know, is a nice entry level for people that may or may not have done um, any type of coaching before, gets you some faster results and gets you moving on your way. Um, because if you're currently dealing with compassion fatigue and you don't want to hear that you're going to feel better in a year, um, a year program probably doesn't sound desirable to you. Um, so right now, um, I do, like I said, have other length, uh, three, six, nine month and 12 month programs. But um, for the purposes of today, I will talk about Inception and the six weeks. And outside of that program, um, I do one on one uh, breathwork sessions, theta healing sessions. So you do not have to be in the program to access uh, those services if any of those uh, pique your interest. All right. That sounds amazing, Coach Taylor. I'm sure our audience would love to know how they can work or how can they get in touch with you and learn more about this offer. Um, so I am on Facebook uh, as Taylor A. Carruthers. You can always uh, DM me. I, I It's me. Um, <laughs> I'm answering you back. So you can always reach out to me um, via DM. I'm also... I'm on every platform, but Facebook and Instagram, I check and uh, I participate actively on daily. Um, so on Facebook, uh, Taylor A. Carruthers. Um, I also have my business page, which is Metanoia Innovative Solutions. Um, my website is www.metanoiainnovativesolutions.com, which is scrolling beautifully across the bottom of the screen. Um, you can sign up. There's a contact me form. Um, my group on Facebook is Elevate Your Essence. Um, I've just started talking about this group and cultivating this awesome, amazing community. So if you want to come be a part of that, 
you can sign up or send me a direct message and um, I would be more than happy to get you an invite for the group or you we can just chat in the direct messages and possibly set up a call. All right, wonderful. Now, before we wrap up, Coach Taylor, do you have any personal advice or final words of wisdom you'd like to share? My personal advice would be you don't have to have it all figured out. Just start. Um, you don't have to wait for the perfect time, the perfect moment, the perfect, you know, amount in the bank account. Just start today. Um, start today. Tomorrow is never promised. Um, so just start making those conscious decisions right now in this moment uh, to change your life and you'll do it. Right. Just do it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. That's such a wonderful and valuable advice, Coach Taylor. Thank you for sharing that. All right. Now, I'm sure that our audience gained so much valuable knowledge from you today. Kindly remind our audience, our fam bam here, once again, to your exciting offers that you have prepared for them. Sure. Um, so, again, I am Taylor Carruthers, and my um, my who I serve is I empower purpose driven non for profit professionals to fully embody their own mental well being without the disassociation of compassion fatigue using breathwork activated theta healing. My main offer right now is Inception, which is a six week group coaching program um, that is includes breathwork and theta healing. And I also offer breathwork and theta healing sessions outside of the group container. Um, so you do not have to be in the six week program to access those services. And I have an awesome growing Facebook community and I'm on Facebook um, as myself, Taylor A. Carruthers, and also on Instagram. So you're welcome to reach out and send me a DM. All right, so before we wrap up, today's incredible episode. Um, I want to extend my deepest um, gratitude to you, Coach Taylor, for being here with us today and sharing your expertise and your time. Thank you very much, Coach. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Now, as we wrap up, let me just try this one. Okay. Now, thank you, everybody. Thank you, my fam bam, for joining us today. Remember, every step you take towards unlocking your potential brings you closer to the success you deserve. All right. Now, join us again for the next episode where we'll continue this empowering conversation. Until then, stay safe and healthy and keep believing in yourself. This is um, Ritzel, the Red Director, and Coach Taylor A. Carruthers. See you next time. Never stop reaching for the stars and keep talking business with Ritz. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>